In this class, we'll cover what serialization means in Java. In Java, there is an interface called the serializable interface. This interface is what is called as a marker interface. There are a few interfaces in Java which are called as marker interfaces. In a marker interface, there are no methods at all. So, what does it mean? So, your class doesn't really have to implement any methods because that marker interface doesn't have any methods. Normally, when an interface has methods, any class which implements that interface needs to implement the methods in that interface. But since the marker interface doesn't have any methods, it doesn't have to do anything. So, what is the purpose of this marker, marker interface? The marker interface lets Java know that this class, an object of this class can be persisted. Persisted means saved. So, it can be saved as bytes on disk or those bytes can be transmitted over the network to another JVM and when it is transmitted over the network to another JVM that JVM can read those bytes and reconstruct that object okay or if it is within the same JVM the or ex for example let's say you save an object uh, uh, serialize an object and save it as bytes on a file that file can be given to some somebody else and they can deserialize that file that means read the bytes from that file and reconstruct that object okay so that's what that's the ad advantage of using the serializable interface so the serializable interface when it saves an object it actually saves the entire object graph of an object that includes the current object, the attributes that it inherits from its base classes and if that object contains other objects which are serializable then those objects are also serialized. That's what the entire object graph means. So the serializable will include all the instance attributes. The instance attributes could be primitive types or they could be objects of another classes but those objects should also be serializable for it to serialize those objects. So it will serialize all the instance attributes from the object which are also serializable and it will also serialize all the instance attributes from the super classes. Okay? The only instance attributes which are excluded from being serialized are those marked as transient. So there is a keyword in Java called transient. So if you mark any attribute as transient it will not get serialized. And what are the requirements for a class to be serializable? The class should always implement the serializable interface. It should always have a no argument constructor. And finally, there, there is a optional attribute called serial version UID. This basically repre represents the version number of a class. So it checks the compatibility of a serialized objects with the current version of the class. So if you have saved a file onto a disk, with a certain serial version ID and then later on you change your f your class okay then th then the class that you have and the serialized object they are not compatible because they have different serial version IDs so how do you serialize and deserialize let's say you want to serialize to a file so what you have to do is you have to use this class called object output stream remember the output stream is an abstract class which writes bytes but here you want to write the objects as bytes so that's why you use an object output stream so the object is saved as bytes now it is saved as bytes but where so what you have to do is you have to create a file output stream and then wrap it with an object output stream so the object output stream knows that it is actually finally going to a file similarly when you read from a file you have to use the object input stream and call the read object method. So if you are reading a, uh, the, ob the serialized object from a file on disk, then you, you need to wrap a file input stream with an object input stream. Remember the decorator pattern which lets you add additional responsibilities by wrapping an object with another, another object. So in this case, you have to wrap a file input stream, so you are reading from a file 
the file input stream will read from a file and give you bytes and what do you do with those bytes you want to interpret those bytes as an object so that's why you wrap those bytes with an object input stream to interpret the bytes as an object so let's look at an example program so I have a, this program called demo serializable so what I do in this in this in this example program is to take a object of a car class serialize it to a file on disk in C colon temp and then finally I'll read that object which I have saved and after reading the object that I have that I have saved I'll compare the original object and the object that I have read from file okay so I have this car object it implements serializable and if you see here it has a lot of instance attributes string itself is a class it's not a primitive type whereas int is a primitive type and I have a speed the speed of a car is a transient attribute it is something which keeps changing with time so I, I mark it as transient so it will never save it okay and I have all the setter and getter, getter methods okay and I have a no argument constructor that is extremely important and you need to provide all the setters and getter, getters and then I have a two string method which prints the instance attributes and have an equals and equals method as well I need the equals method because at the after reading the f object from the f the object from the file I want to invoke the equals method with the object that was read from the file. This is the original object and this is the object read from the file. I want to make sure that this equals prints true because all I'm doing is taking the object that I have created, okay, write it into this file by invoking the right object and I pass that my Camry once I have written the f after I have saved the car object I read the car object by using the file input stream on the on this file the my car file and this file input stream I'm wrapping with an object input stream and then I'm invoking the read object similarly when I write it to a file I take this object but before I take the object I create an object output stream first I take the car file create a file output stream and wrap it with an object output stream so when I write the object that object actually finally goes to this destination which is a my car file so it is going to save it in c colon temp my car dot serialize dot ser so let's run this program run as java application and then it first prints the car that was created and then this is the car that was read from the disk I'm printing by using the two string method on the car object. And then finally I'm comparing the two by invoking the equals method. So they are both equal now. Let's say for example I read, read the car the car from the disk, right? But before I do that, let's say I change the the, the year of the car. Okay? Say I said I say my car dot set sorry my Camry dot set year to 2012. Now they will not be equal because I have changed the year of the car. So it is false now. Because uh, when it was saved to disk the year of the car was 2005 but after saving it to disk I have changed this original object and I'm setting the year to 2012 now they are both not the same 